grant us serenity to accept the things we cannot change, the courage to change the things we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. God's will, not ours, be done. Amen. What's your name? My name is Kayla. Hey, Kayla! Hey, Kayla! All right? Yeah. All right. This is April. Oh, one second, Kayla. One second. Guys, guess what? We can sing together, but we can't what? So let's give her a little bit of a uh, little bit of respect so we can get get this thing moving. Go ahead, Mama. All right. Through abstinence and through working the twelve steps of Narcotics Anonymous, our lives have become useful. Basic text, page eight. Before coming to Narcotics Anonymous, our lives were centered around using. For the most part, we have very little energy left over for jobs, relationships, or other activity. We served only our addiction. The 12 steps of Narcotics Anonymous provide a simple way to turn our lives around. We start by staying clean a day at a time. When our energy is no longer channeled into our addiction, we find that we have the energy to pursue other interests. As we grow in recovery, we become able to sustain healthy relationships. We become trustworthy employees Hobbies and recreation seem more inviting. Through participation in Narcotics Anonymous, we help others. Narcotics Anonymous does not promise us that we will find good jobs, loving relationships, or a fulfilling life. But when we work the 12 steps to the best of our ability, we can find that we become the type of people who are capable of finding employment, sustaining loving relationships, and helping others. We stop serving our disease and begin serving God and others. The 12 steps are the key to transforming our lives. Just for today, I will have the wisdom to use the 12 steps in my life and the courage to grow in my recovery. I will practice my program to become a responsible, productive member of society. Thanks for reading. Thank you. Good job. I'm clean, Kayla. Since February 25th. I'm going to sign that, y'all. About the month, right? Yes, April 24th. Let's go. Let's give it to all. God bless you. Thanks for reading, sis. Thank Are you, you ready? Okay. Two months, Caleb. Two months. Exactly. Yeah. All right, That's queen. What's up. Congratulations. What's up? All right. Thank all right. Thank God for last night's rest this morning. Rise. Yes. Thank God for his grace and his mercy. Grace is always giving me what I don't deserve. And mercy is not giving me what I do deserve. And for that, I'm eternally grateful. How's everybody doing? Right. Awesome. My name is Derek McKnight. That's Robert Hayes. Together we call the Minds of Men. Nonprofit, spiritual organization. We don't deal with religion. I've been clean for 13 years. Rob been clean for 12 years. But all we got is what? Today. today. So we like to stay in today. All right? So today we got a nice, good combination good food for y'all spiritual food y'all be should leave out of here well fed today all right all right, all right let's go you ready rob yeah yep. let's go guys real quick um everybody here know what trauma is yeah. who don't know what trauma is somebody said no but either way it's a situation that kind of plagues us our whole life unless we address it or get, get help with it right it even wake you up it even you might smell something, you might remember something, and all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. So what happened is we might not know where your trauma happened, uh -huh. but we, we like they were a lot of times with addicts. They know somewhere along that timeline something was going on with us. Mm -hmm. Drugs and alcohol, poor relationships, bad relationships, we use to cover up these feelings and these emotions, right? Mm -hmm. So wherever the trauma happened, I don't know. We we, we if we get anybody get a beating, and it's normal to get a beating, I guess, yeah. but not a beating like we felt somebody trying to kill you. For like somebody trying to kill you and all that kind of stuff. Then the people that were supposed to protect us are the ones that might molest it, hurt us, and all that kind of stuff, right? So this leaves a scar, emotional, physical, emotional uh, scar on us as we live life. So that kind of like, boom, blows up our life, right? Blows up our life in our direction. So this right here is like a person who develops normally. So a guy named Eric Erickson is a doctor. He, he specializes in the, the human development. So when our development gets interrupted, right, uh, a lot of us don't grow up or mature as we should, as we can. So they call it what? Uh, emotions over intelligence. So now, because I've been traumatized, I'm almost like almost in what they call a survival mode. 
You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm very reaction. Uh, you know, if I think something is real, it is real. And that's not, that's not right. Just because you think it's real, that doesn't mean it is real. So we want to learn how to put our intelligence over top of our emotions. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If I could put my intelligence over my, my emotions, I have the, a better ability to make better decisions. Mm -hmm. I cannot make my all my life decisions based off my feelings. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Why I not? mean, sometimes they say you want to trust your gut and all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. but the reason why, I need to make uh, my decisions off of facts. Right. Okay. Because emotions do what? Vacillate. Oh, yeah. Vacillate, go up and down. Yes. The facts stay the same. Mm -hmm. yep. Whenever you pull that book out, it's the same fact. So if right. I can make my, my decisions in life off of facts, mm -hmm. I got a better chance in developing because I was interrupted in my development stage, mm -hmm. if you follow me. So yeah. I needed, I was off, and I became off track, now I got to learn how to get on track. Uh -huh. So how do I get on track? I get on track from what? From, from learning how to correct my mind and how to correct my heart. Yeah. McKnight calls it a, a, a brain surgery and a spiritual surgery. Yeah. So when we turn around here, we're gonna talk about those dysfunctional homes, uh -huh. those, those, those uh, environments that made active addiction look like a, a good, a great out. When actuality, it was a terrible out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because we got to learn to feel, deal, so we can heal. Mm -hmm. You understand? Feel, deal, so we can heal. Even if you use the drugs, you use the drugs. Guess what? When you're done the drugs, guess what happens? I still got the same problem. Mm -hmm. Now I'm broke, and I still got the same problem. Mm -hmm. Might even be in jail, because I use drugs, I break out in spots. <laughs> Gratisford, Holmesburg. The roundhouse, yep. mm -hmm. subway platforms. <laughs> I mean, like, what happened last night? It was weird, <laughs> right? So we want to take a look at ourselves. We want to take a look at ourselves so we can recalibrate ourselves All right, and get ourselves back on that track. All right, the heart, y'all. The heart is very important. Dang. Very important. Y'all, everybody see the heart? Mm -hmm. I believe, right? There is two parts of the human body for a person to change. That means the mind has to change in the heart has to change, right? If my mind stays the same and my heart stays the same, I stay the same individual right here at Kirk Bride. So you'll come in here, get a little bit of weight, and you can be just bitten and leave out of here the same individual as you was when you first came in here. To see a change, a significant change of change, it takes a lot of breaking and it takes a lot of work, right? So we're gonna talk about dysfunctional families. Anybody come from dysfunctional families? All right, dysfunctional families produce dysfunctional parents who give birth to dysfunctional children who manifest dysfunctional behaviors. And some of us as recovering addicts, we've been raised with a lot of trauma, raised with a lot of rejection, raised with a lot of pain, raised with a lot of hurt, raised with a lot of neglect, raised with a lot of abuse, raised in fear. Dysfunctional families. Mm -hmm. And we put babies on top of our pain. Clothes on top of our pain, makeup on top of our pain, cars on top of our pain, prestige and property all on top of our pain. And if anybody know about intrusive memories, you know what they are? That's uninvited memories, thoughts of the trauma, of the rejection, of the hurt, of the abuse. Out of nowhere, here it comes. And if you don't fight them, you will entertain them. Mm -hmm. Let me say that again. If we don't fight, we will entertain the thoughts that comes. Dysfunctional families. Point number two, self-pity con artists. Self-pity con artists. Who are they, Rob? I never had a dad. I never had a mom. You're going to leave me like everybody else. Anybody hear that? <laughs> <laughs> so you can still <laughs> so you, wait, 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 Go ahead, come on, Rob, go ahead. If you leave me, I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> Anybody heard that before? <laughs> It's all your fault. Self-pity con artists. Also, they instead of working on the rejection, they use, they, they, they what? They trauma as a what? A license to manipulate people. Oh, a weapon. That's for those who don't want to work on it. So you use it and you go to somebody green. Oh, man, I feel sympathy. Who saw um, Lifetime? Anybody see Lifetime channel? Yeah, yeah. That's the women channel. A lot of what? Self-pity card artists. A lot, of, a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of women on there comes from what? Dysfunctional families. Yeah. Neglect and hurt and fear. And what happens is they, they, it, it, it grows into them. It's in their DNA. Yeah. Who know about Betty Davis? Thank God for Betty Davis and, 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 um, Joan, and Joan Crawford. 
a movie called What Happened to Baby Jane. Good movie. Good movie. Look, Betty Davis was a star when she was a little girl. Joan Crawford was nobody when she was a little girl. The, the tables reversed. When Betty Davis got older, she became nobody. Joan Crawford became everything. And Betty Davis' jealousy caused her to get in the car and run over her sister. Mm. Paralyzing her. Thanks. Good movie. What happened to Baby Jane? And there was one scene I like this one. Betty, Betty Davis came downstairs and she was spinning in front of the mirror yeah, like a little girl. Yeah. Reminiscing yeah. of when she was what? A little girl. Right. Dysfunctional families is real. Wow. Self pity con artists. Yeah. Come in here and look for the therapist. Look for the techs who might be green and, and try to maneuver. Right? And try to, and, you know what I'm saying? Try to maneuver situations in here. Uh -huh. Rules and regulations and policies and all that on your self pity yeah. con artist information. They didn't give out invitations to everybody. Want everybody to come and celebrate with them and they pity. Yeah. Anybody here like that? Yeah. Let's keep them moving. Isolationists. Why is that dangerous? For those who come from a lot of trauma, a lot of pain, they're still here. Their heart is still not circumcised. Right. It's easy to why? isolate. Why is that, Rob? Well, they say, they say upstairs is a circus. They say up here is a circus, but if you go upstairs, make sure you leave a trap door open. Because you're going to need some help. Because that's definitely a three-ring circus upstairs. Hey, isolationists. Who here isolate? When we outside, you inside. When we downstairs, you upstairs. When we upstairs, you downstairs. Isolation. Why? How come? A fear. A what? Being close. Not being loved. Very good. Root issues, we're getting there. How much time you got clean, sis? Right there. Isolated. Almost a month. Almost a month. God bless you. <laughs> Come on. What's your name? Uh, my name's Mario. Hey, Mario. Hey, Mario. I, uh, you know, I'm already catching myself isolating on the unit that I just came to. Um, mm -hmm. Because, uh, you know, I agree with what um, you know, the person you just shared said about, like, fear of, um, you know, reaching out to someone and not getting the same love that they've given you but for me like it's a totally like you know when I when I come when I came in here you know I started looking at like all the negative people you know what I mean and you know what it really was is me seeing myself and a lot of people in here you know what I mean and listening to like the complainers complain mm -hmm. and, the, and the schemer scheme and the, oh. and, the and the you know um how can I get higher on my methadone and the, the, the people nodding out and all this and all that. And that was all me, like, seeing, you know, the negative of me and others. Right. And I, like, you know, and then I start wanting to hide from that, you know, mm. like, instead of trying to, like, not look at that and look at the positive and, and grow, I'll just go run away and hide, and hide from all that and, like, literally, like, put my hands over my ears so I don't have to hear it, you know, because I don't, you know, I don't like seeing I don't want to deal with the reality of the negative in me, you know what I mean? And being here almost forces you to do that because there's so many, you know, so many people that are just like me in here, you know what I mean? Like in, in my mind or the devil or whatever you want to call it, like that's all I see in other people is just, you know, like the negative in myself, you know what I mean? And it makes me sick. You know? mm -hmm. It's like watching a movie, you know what I mean? Like that, you know, you, you know that you're forced to watch, you know? It's just like, it's terrible, you know what I mean? Like, and that's and that's all like that's all I've been dealing with lately. It's just like seeing all the negative in myself and others, and and, and, and trying to run from it, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm, I'm running from reality, really. You know what I mean? Everyone's like so crazy about that phone upstairs, like you know what I mean? ah, I the phone, the pain box, the pain, the pain box. box. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't want to deal with that pain box. You know? get too into my story but like you know you know my um my the little family that I got thinks that I um you know kicked methadone cold turkey in jail and I was coming close to doing that you know which was which I would never suggest to anybody but you know of course with my luck they have it you know they they let me go because it was too crowded you know overcrowding in jail and I was still going through it and I end up making the mistake of going back out there, and now I'm here, and now I'm back on it again. Okay. And um, I'm having a hard time letting my family know that you know I'm back on it again, and you know because I know it's going to break their heart, and they're going to look at me like I'm, you know, I made the weak decision, and 
just a lot of feelings and emotions going on right now that I'm, I'm, I'm really just hiding from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hear that? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Keep talking about it and face it and don't run and work through it. And healing comes and solutions. And guess what? And you definitely be an instrument for other people too that are coming through here also. Right? Because you, cause you went through it. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, you used to run, but now you're not running. How much time y'all clean? Okay, you're trying to, okay. Somebody. It's a process, it's a process. How much time you clean now? How much time I have cleaned? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I would say, I mean, you know, with the methadone, um, you know, I would say about, I would say about five days. Five days? Hey, all right. Five days. Yeah. 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 Five days. Yeah.